Hey, 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 everybody. We are about to go live. Um, we're going live and we're about to interview the artist, Alexia. We're going to go live and interview her and talk about her music and everything that she's doing right now. She has an amazing song called Praying. And um, we're going to have her live on the um, show and we're going to be talking with her. Um, she has a dope song, so we're going to bring her in in a few minutes. And stay tuned. Make sure you can check out all interviews and all the different things coming up at um, www.lushradioonline.net. And we're waiting for her. She's going to jump on right now. Not the interview. We're going to bring her in in a second. So stay tuned. We're going to have a quick interview with the artist called Alexia. And she has a song called Praying. I'm going to pray uh, you guys the song real quick so you can hear it. She's a dope artist um, and she's a fashionista. So we're about to interview her real quick. It's going to be so amazing. So stay tuned. Uh, I'm going to bring up her song. And I don't know what you guys are checking out, but on Netflix, 100, Physical 100 is an amazing show. And this is our song I'm playing for you guys right now. Hey everybody, thank you for tuning in. This is our song right here. It's called Praying. We're going to bring her on right now. We got our song playing right now. Are you able to jump on with us, Alexa? This is a song right now that you're listening to. It's called Praying on YouTube. It already hit like 50K views. It's insane. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. You're on. I'm, I'm, I'm clicking on for you to join live. I think you have to accept it. There you go. Okay. <laughs> Isn't she beautiful? She's live with us. This is the artist right here, Alexia. It's called Praying. Fit, hit 50K on YouTube. She's doing a thing on TikTok. It's crazy right now. So we're going to be talking with her. The devil is a liar. We was trying to go live on StreamYard, and the devil was trying us. But not today, devil. <laughs> not today, devil. So it's your girl, Leslie Lush, Lush, live in the building, and it's going down. We're interviewing the hottest artist out there, the one and only Alexia. She can sing, and she's a fashionista, well-rounded. And what? She's a Pisces, too. Come on. It's going down, all right? We're going to be talking to her about her amazing song called Praying. Hit 50K on YouTube. She's doing a lot of amazing things. She's looking to work with amazing artists and amazing producers. So, hey, Alexia, thank you for joining us tonight. Alexia, so, Alexia, you there? What is going on? Alexia, you still there? Oh, Lord. What happened? Alexia, you still there? Uh, Alexia, you frozen? What is going on? Oh, it dropped off. <laughs> Alexia, come back on here. Come on, please. Ah, come on, please. 
It's okay. What's up, Webster Styles? What's up, everybody? Okay, we are back. All right. All right, so let's get into it, okay? <laughs> Alexia. <laughs> I don't know why it just dropped like that. Yeah, it's it's crazy. Alexia, so talk to us. What got you started into getting into the music industry? Well, I wanted to sing since I was like five. I just knew that's where I wanted to be on stage. And then um, when I started recording music when I was 12, the first time I got in the studio, I just knew this is where... I was meant to be it just felt at home it felt comfortable so i was like this is this is what i want and, and who were some of the artists that inspire you i'd say at the age i mean it's changed throughout time but i'd say at the age it was definitely i'd say probably like beyonce i'd say rihanna definitely i used to listen to michael jackson all the time you know growing up with my mom she played through the house Prince, and even my dad would play some of his weird, like European music. And I, just, you know, listening to all types of genres, I just really, I resonated with all of them. So, definitely, definitely. Now, what do you feel is that um, being in the industry? Um, what do you feel is one of the hardest things that you felt like you had to deal with dealing in the industry? The challenges. <laughs> the hardest parts. Um... I guess you could say probably, I can't even, I mean, being taken seriously is one of them. Mm. You know, trying to take advantage of you. So that, that that's hard. Um, wow. I mean, there's so many that it's actually hard to just choose one. I'd say probably constantly keeping up with yourself and not doubting yourself. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you're always trying to aim for perfection. Mm -hmm. and Sometimes you're, it puts things on hold and mm -hmm. you have something that you're working on, on. Like this song, I was working on it and um, I shelved it for months and it wasn't, and it was very special to me. It told me, yeah, you should really like drop it. And I was like, I mean, it's all right. And he's like, no, you should seriously like drop it. And I dropped it and it, it's been a great song. It's performed well. And sometimes it's your self doubt that keeps you back. So I'd say, your own mind is your own worst enemy and like your, your, your best friend at the same time. So what was the inspiration for this song, Praying? Um, a lot of self-doubt, actually. <laughs> I was kind of a, um, a fuzzy time zone. It's a fuzzy era of my life. Um, I was really thinking about trying like what my future was, kind of my past. And the song's really about, I mean, one of my lyrics that I say is um, talking to myself, but still misunderstood. And I was like, I was, you know, identity crisis almost. Mm -hmm. so, like the song itself was, uh, I kind of wanted to sing that was a little bit of a vibe. You can kind of like, you know, get down, not get down to, but like, you know, kind of chill, sing along to like something catchy. But at the same time, I wanted something that spoke to people. Like if you actually listen to the lyrics, like that speaks to you, you know, and that's that's kind of what I what I what that's what inspired the song. That's what I want people to get out of it. I mean, it's definitely a dope song. I f I call it hypnotic in a sense, right? When you hear it with the track, your voice is just is hypnotic in a sense, you know. Yeah. And I'll, thank you. Almost you go into a little trance when you hear the song. I'm like, I really, I'm like, I don't know what kind of power you have in this song, but it's like <laughs> you're just bopping your head. I love the song. Um. Now, you know, if you could work with anybody dead or alive, who would it be? Um, anybody dead or alive, who could it be? Mm, dang, it's like my brain's going blank. I'm just <laughs> I'm up with anything. Um, anybody dead or alive, who could it be? On with music? So many talented artists. It's like the funny thing is I have so many on the top of my head, but like it's so hard to pick one. I mean, Rihanna's always been one of my biggest inspirations. She hasn't dropped music in a while. I think it'd be super cool. If she dropped a project, I think the coolest thing would be able to be featured on that project. So definitely her. But dead or alive, I always wanted to work with Prince. Ooh. Yeah, like he's just, just like a classic, you know. He's that really was nice. But R Rihanna's a fellow Pisces too now. Yeah. So <laughs> So you already know that would be a win-win right. if you if you was on Rihanna. So that would be dope. Now, you know, what is the th things that you have learned behind the scenes? Because, you know, we when you're an artist, you're so passionate. 
you love the whole entire industry, you love what you're doing and you're into your work. What have you learned in regards to business versus when you first, like your aha moments and stuff as you went through, you know, this journey? The business aspect. It's the part that I'm weakest at. I'm I, the business aspect is probably the thing that I learned, like, or things that I've learned. Mm -hmm. Important thing. I hate to push it, push it out <laughs> to something else, but probably having a good manager. Self-management. Yeah. Is, you know, not working on music only when you get the strike of inspiration. So you got to keep it even when you don't feel like it. Mm hmm uh, music is changing. It's always changing, and it's changed drastically. Where the industry itself barely even exists anymore because of how music is not streamed. On, you know, it's it's so with music like the, it the money trickles down so little to the artist that you now you have to be completely multifaceted. You yeah. have to, to do basically anything. Um, yeah, so I'd say even business wise, you have to know how to sell yourself in other aspects not just music, but whether you, you have to find something else that you can attach to music and then from there, keep it going. From there, you can, you can connect them. A uh, loyal fan base will follow you into music and then stay with you if you're good. So even if that means you come up through YouTube, through fashion, through video gaming, through whatever, like as long as you keep doing, working on your craft and you're able to translate it into music as well and those fa fan base and you're good, you know, I think that's definitely something that that's a very important, the versatility. Definitely. Now, now let's look at, you know, with technology as it's advancing so much rapidly, like you can't even keep up with technology. Every other day is a new app, a new thing. You got the metaverse, you have TikTok, you got all these different things. How do you feel that has leveled the playing field for artists? Um... I would love to say that it's made it so you can find more artists now. Like you can just scroll on TikTok and find new artists, find artists in different genres. Really, you're like going in different places now. Like there's sub, sub, sub genres that social media and technology has allowed to be birthed, you know, like basically germinate in different places. So I think that's super cool. The thing is, because it's so vast, it's also become very saturated. Mm. Find anything fresh or new because it's really you know people just are constantly even trying to think about what's the coolest thing i can do to create fast music that's kind of i'm not going to say disposable but like that's going to catch it's going to catch a vibe immediately you know what i mean sorry that's my bro um <laughs> gonna catch a vibe immediately so i feel like that's also created a sort of not disposable music, but people are thinking about something that'll be catchy for 10 seconds as opposed to something that could be listened to for, you know, another 10 years. Definitely, definitely. Before, it used to take, like, maybe, like, two or three years for the uh, song to really get in rotation. Yes. And now it's, like, a couple of seconds, and then they, they're at the Grammys. <laughs> I'm like, you, I'm like you, you had one hit, and you're, like, at the Grammys. I'm just saying, you know, not throwing no shade. I'm just saying. <laughs> it's just, you know, it's a different time, you know, um, and, you know, things are changing with technology. Um, where do you see music in the near future? I actually seeing the pendulum swim, swing in the opposite direction. I think you actually are starting to see the pendulum swing in the opposite direction. Artists, bigger artists are already starting to put out songs that aren't as short, you know, that are longer. They're going into different genres. They're tapping into the different genre, genres that are popping up from social media. But at the same time, they are um, sticking, you know, they're sticking to their style a bit, but they're trying to branch off into more artisticness. They're trying to be taken seriously. Like uh, I look at, for example, Lil Yachty dropped his album uh, most recently. And I, can't, I can't think of the name for some reason, but it's like almost all completely alternative. It's like almost a mixture between like, it's like alternative in, and I'm not gonna say punk, but like a rock, rock aesthetic or whatever. Mm -hmm. And people are gonna start doing like the long songs, like back in the 2010s and prior, where you had like these long songs with even like beat switches halfway, you know, to keep the, keep things interesting because these short, like disposable songs, even though they may be dope, they may be fun, catchy, it's disposable. Like you know, it's it's kind of momentary. When you have a song that looks like it sounds like it's been taken time put into it 
and it's been uh the people dedicated hours and like it seems creative the person's actually giving you a piece of themselves i think that you know that keeps that's it. you're able to maintain fan base and i think music is going to go in that direction if it already hasn't started definitely 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 i think so too i mean it um the longer songs were the classics you know classics you know People want to, you know, have memories and stuff. Those songs would be like gone in a second. Be like, what was the name of that song again? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you don't I mean music now uh, because of TikTok, for example. Like, you don't even know the name of the songs. You don't even know the name of artists. Like, you just know kind of like a sound. Yeah. You know, you just you know a sound. You know an artist like off of just one song. And I mean, it's created one hit wonders even more so than ever. Exactly. Exactly. Now, when you're in the studio and you're working, what is some of your inspiration? Like when you go into the booth, like what are you thinking about when you what like what gives you inspiration? Um, <laughs> from different places, you know. Sometimes the beat is just super catchy, and I'll kind of like just freestyle something on it, and I'll be like, "Yeah, like this is this is it. Like I like this is like this is catchy. This is I'll be like, ooh, this is like really catchy. This is really good. Like I don't know what it is, but like there's something about this, and I'll write on top of it." just the words that kind of come to me to create a song around it other times it could legit come from a color mm. and I'll, I'll be like dang that color gives me this feeling and then i'll write about it and other times it seriously seriously is the feels sometimes it's really just a person time period just a scene that i remember in, in a memory that i had and just memory sometimes like i work a lot off of nostalgia a lot off of the past and um it's just sometimes it's pain you know mm, mm. sometimes you can find some deep inspiration with pain some people have made some amazing songs through pain yeah, exactly exactly <laughs> definitely yeah. and uh, and we're going to play a little bit more of your song just for those people that joined a little bit so we're going to play some more of this amazing song It's hypnotic, man. I <laughs> so you got to check out the video, everybody, on YouTube. 50K. Insane. We try to get it to a million. That's all I'm saying. I'm just saying. We try to get it to a million. So we played a little snippet, but like I said, you can check it out. It's Alexia. It's A-L-X-Y-A -A, praying on YouTube. Make sure you leave comments and like, 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 like. Now, Alexia, um, if you can give advice to an upcoming artist, um, what kind of advice would you give them getting into the industry? Hmm. Besides find a really good manager, release a lot mm. on advice i don't release a lot i should release way more i should have been releasing way, way more but the more you release the more music you um the more music you you learn kind of is your vibe you kind of find your sound quicker um people you know people become fans you know people start listening to you for real because the more music releases the more serious you're taking mm -hmm. obviously every Couple, don't release every day because mm -hmm. like you have some things that i think i think people get tired yeah hearted but also don't take too long when you're making stuff mm -hmm. no i take a long time and I, i'd say that's probably only held me back through time now i'm very proud of the things i've released the most recent song probably the most proud but that song like you know i dropped it pretty quickly after that person told me yeah you should drop this so I was like, okay, like I'm not gonna think too much on it. I'm not gonna change too much. I'm gonna just drop it. I'd say more advice would be kind of like, <clears throat> um, uh, I don't know. There's so many. Like I don't want to sound cliche. Like obviously, don't compare yourself to the next person. But okay. but he's always doing that. Like I'm not gonna. I I, I feel bad because I'll tell you. Don't compare yourself to the next person, but I'm like, dang, like that person's doing this though, you know? <laughs> so, you know, you, know, you don't want to do that. Um, I'd say also you want to network a lot 
And the networking isn't always at the networking events. I'd say most of the networking has come from finding things in common on an outside topic. Mm -hmm. I, so people will think, okay, this person's into music. I'm into music. Let's work on it. Let's work together. Sometimes people don't fe want to feel like you're in it just because they're into music and you're into music. They want to find a third thing that's like a second thing that kind of takes their mind away from it. So like, I mean, this is super random, like um, a cooking class, literally. <laughs> like <laughs> another thing. It also doesn't just like give you opportunity to meet other people, which could also be into music, but it also shows like, it also sh you learn different stuff and doing different things. It sounds kind of, simplistic but doing different things helps you expand your mind which also finds inspiration in what you're doing so yeah i mean it helps even with inspiration and also with networking on the side so that's what that's i'd say that's something that's been underrated i think that's a that's a, that's good advice right there at the at the end of the day yet and we used to say back in the day your network is your net worth yeah. right so yeah <laughs> you know diversify your network you know especially in this day and age with, with social media um linkedin all these different things like diversify your network because you never know what you're going to learn and you never know what might have been lying in you yeah that you, you might unlock by meeting someone different right um so i think that was great advice um and let's switch over to fashion because you're a fashionista been to paris been all over traveling you've done some amazing styling and stuff like that right if you could work with any company or brand who would it be <sighs> any company or brand. sorry that's my brother he's playing video okay. <laughs> i'm like bro like i'm doing this interview like please be sure um any brand or company Funny fashion. Who would I want to work with? It's funny because I think about these things all the time. But when actually then it's like asked to me, I'm like, whoa, like I have no idea. I never thought about it. Um, you know, a while ago I would have said Balenciaga, but they kind of found themselves in hot water oh, recently. Yeah, yeah, they messed up. <laughs> uh, so somebody, somebody said Louis Vuitton. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, I've always wanted to work with Louis Vuitton. Now that they have a new creative director, which is um, Pharrell, that mm -hmm. would be that was dope. <laughs> for part of the culture, so if I got to work with Pharrell, I mean, R.I.P. Virgil, because honestly, it would have been a yeah. in spectacular as well. But if I get to work with Pharrell, man, I made it. <laughs> Are you kidding me? That would be incredible. That so would be dope. That, that's my brain. <laughs> that seems pretty solid for the time being. That seems pretty solid. So, so we're gonna go with Louis Vuitton. So a lot of you all don't know, but um. Alexia, yeah, Pharrell is dope. And I think both of their minds together, Alexia's mind and Pharrell's mind, oh my God, it's going to be amazing. Oh my God. I, I want a piece, whatever you design. But, <laughs> but, um, but Alexia is into not only, like she's been into fashion since she was little. Like she loves, like she goes to like, she can find like vintage pieces. Like, and most people won't even be looking at it. Like she can just spot it out. Like she has spidey sense to like, find these rare pieces and she puts it together like tell us about that like like how did you get get into that i mean and we're live you know <laughs> irritating i swear to god like um <laughs> like like think bro like anyway um how did i get i mean i got into fashion ever since i was a child um i was a model when I was like a baby. Um, not like I really knew much about fashion at the time, but like, you know, I, I, I was always into it. Um, I used to study creative directors, That's like early 2000s creative directors prior. And it's not like I used to study them. I just, you know, flipped through the different Vogues, Italy, France, USA, it's kind of where I specified. And I would learn the brands and like the ads. And I would, uh, you know, figure out which brands kind of had which aesthetics. And uh, now with the reemergence of early 2000s fashion, it's kind of, uh, <laughs> it's made it very easy for me to pick out what's in style, what's going to be in style, because I can just remember the things that I used to shop in and look at and, and, and study as a kid. Also, I just kind of always had my own, own style. It's always been my own, I always had my own flow. 
I was inspired by different fashion people growing up, even not even fashion people, like even characters like from movies or something. And um, especially the early 2000s, again. <laughs> and now, um, you know, it's come back into style. It's re re been reborn. Mm -hmm. um, I, I enjoy, I, I just, I don't know, like I look at vintage pieces and I'm like, and I'm like, okay, this, 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 this is definitely something that was like that was sell. This is something that's in style. This is something that will be in style. I don't really know. It's just kind of it speaks to me before I speak to it, you know. <laughs> Man, I like that right there. It speaks to you before you speak to it. Now, when, when when we're looking at fashion, right? What don't you want to come back? <sighs> Truth is, okay, I'm really <laughs> not a fan of the drag era. Like we had a whole 2010, like you know, the swag caps with the little like diamond. You had the, the the cheat like the really tight cheetah print neon green skinny jeans type of era. Like the MFAO, man, that was that was a nightmare of an era. Um, <laughs> but the thing is, like everything can come back into style and just be redone better. You yeah. know, things yes. come. Back in the style we just update them so the early 2000s that's in style now is that the same early 2000s is that rocked the same way as we rocked it back in the the actual early 2000s now it's just a re-emergence a rebirth so now we'll watch walk we'll rock things in a way that's like just modern and actually looks kind of good and maybe in 20 years from now they're gonna look back and be like oh my god what are they doing in the 20 in the thousand in the 2020s like what was that what is that rebirth like disgusting I think we're better now than the 20, 2000, like the early 2000s actual fashion. Because that was a little scary. You know, the whole dress with like the tutu and then like the Ugg boot underneath the jeans and then the crop top with the cheetah print and then like four belts and like two. I was like, bro, like we were really doing the most. But uh, nowadays, I think we do it a little better. But I'm afraid of things coming back that just look bad. Like I'm, I've never been a fan of the Isabel Marant sneaker wedge. <laughs> and then, like that i know it's coming back into style i already see like styles picking it up that mm -hmm. i'm hopping on that is not a trend i will be hopping on whatsoever <laughs> <laughs> beginning and i don't like it now <laughs> that's really that definitely now you all heard it from the expert i mean she's an expert fashionista um she can definitely tell you a lot of amazing things her music is amazing now what would you define your genre as? I'd say probably alternative R&B. Mm. Because it's no. not completely R&B, but at the same time, it's not completely hip-hop, and it's not completely, you know, alternative. You know, it kind of, like, bleeds into different things. So I, I'd have to say um, probably an alternative blend. And so far, I've released those songs, but I also worked on, like, a heavier like rock song like a few a few months back and it's kind of still has you know r&b vibes on it because like on um, some parts like says just released a song like that and it's kind of like rock on some parts and other parts it's like r&b and i mean i just would say alternative because that's like the bleeding part it's like the the fuzzy part of music is alternative right so, Nice. Well, like I said, I think you're doing amazing work. Um, once again, you guys check out Alexia Praying on YouTube. And she has other songs. And she has amazing songs. She has a wide variety of music. Um, her IG is Alexia Hits on there and on um, TikTok. And you can see a lot of fashion. You can see a lot of music. And you can just see all the amazing things. Because she's a creative, like, just mastermind. <laughs> So check her out. Um, and if you're a producer out there, she's open to collaboration. Are you open to collaboration with your producers, okay. engineer? Always. I truly enjoy it. Definitely. So, yeah, I mean, um, I'm so happy, and it was an honor to have you on here. Um, and, and you're so amazing, and I just wish you nothing but the best. It's not going to be the last time. We're also going to be doing um, uh, another interview coming up soon. And um, check her out. We're going to be taking this and we're going to be dropping this on YouTube and on the website and have some snippets for those who want to check it out. But yeah, we appreciate you. If they want to check you out, once again, drop that IG, drop all that information for them. Absolutely. Um, uh, IG, I me mean, since we're already on IG Live. <laughs> it's uh, Alexia Hits, A-L-X-Y-A 
hits, but thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, um, and then on Spotify, Apple Music, it's always just A-L-X-Y-A. On TikTok, I think it's the same as Instagram, Alexia Hits. Uh, I haven't been on there in a hot minute, though, so I got to... I gotta, um, I gotta jump back on there. She's gonna be back on there, and she's gonna have a um, a dope website with all stuff, so you can keep up. She's gonna be doing some performances, and a whole bunch of things are coming up soon. So stay up to date with what's going on. This your girl Lushy Lush Lush Radio Online dot net man, and you already know life may throw you a curveball, but you're in charge of the way it goes. Peace. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> all right, y'all. We out.